Ever wonder what happens when two truck drivers accustomed to the warm, sunny weather of SoCal decide to switch it up and venture into the harsh, snow-covered terrain of Colorado? Well, you're about to find out. In this vlog, we ditch our usual route for a snow-packed adventure, navigating through thick snow where trucks dare to tread. Plus, we're giving you an insider look at how we attempt to keep fit on the road, proving that gym routines and truck driving can mix, though it's not always as easy as it sounds. Join us for a laid back day in the life of expedited truck drivers. What's up you guys? I guess I'll go ahead and update you on what's going been going on cause a lot been going on. First and foremost, I wanna say I am so proud of us because we have been getting out this truck and we have been working out. Um, we got out, we were at some truck stop and we uh, started just jumping rope and dancing and you know, just moving our body. And then we turned around, I think the next day we went to the gym, planned the fitness and worked out. So like our bodies are really sore. But I mean, as far as updating you guys on where we are, y'all know we dropped in uh, New Jersey. Then a load came through and sent us to Indiana. And then from Indiana, a load opportunity came through. And I told Carla, like, I really don't want to do that. Cause like y'all, like y'all already know, we like to kind of stay in the southern area of the U.S. during the winter time, but I'm gonna tell you what gets you is the money. I said I don't want to run that low, but I will send. Uh, I will tell them that if they pay me this much, I'll run it. And y'all, <laughs> to my disbelief, they sent it for the amount that um, pretty much the amount we asked for. It was a little off, but it was just so close to the number where it's like, all right, we're gonna go and switch things up and we're gonna run it. Um, we're gonna pick up in St. Louis and we're gonna drive to Colorado. We haven't been to Colorado in a minute. I don't know the last time we've been to Colorado. But um, yeah, so we're dropping in Colorado and then from there, I have no freaking clue where we're gonna go. Um, I just don't know. I, this 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 route, this uh, this run has been different. I thought we were gonna stay in, in the uh, Northeast, but um, I'm pretty open-minded. I mean, I don't wanna get too crazy, but I'm pretty open-minded, and I guess we're all just going to continue to see how this play out. Uh, I got all my stuff laid out. I'm trying to really focus again, like on doing those morning and night routines. So uh, I'll get up in the morning and write in my journal and uh, meditate and all that stuff. And I got my phone turned off, so I won't look at any of my notifications. I'm just trying to go back to that because we're focusing on manifesting the next thing. And uh, when you're manifesting, you're bringing things to your reality, I'm gonna tell you, morning routines, night routines are important. When we decided to get back into the truck to showcase the high field trucking fleet on our channel, I had a clear goal in mind. I wanted to reach out to couples who were tired of the same old routine, looking for a way to make more money and had a desire to travel. Surprisingly, lots of people are familiar with truck driving, but not so much with straight truck expediting. Picture driving in these beautiful 40-foot straight trucks similar to RVs and getting paid to do it. All you need is a reliable partner and a Class B CDL. If this lifestyle intrigues you and you want to learn more about the high field trucking fleet, just hit the link in our description. <laughs> morning beautiful people we are here at bush yet again picking up these huge kegs it's huge whatever it is back there um to deliver it to uh collins colorado you know what i felt really good i got up this morning i got to do my morning routine it almost felt like how it was when i was at home you know being able to meditate write in my journal um and um i don't think i wasn't able to do it as a workout but i'm just trying to see maybe when me and carla uh transition um or switch then maybe i'll get a time or a chance to work out before i take a shower we'll see we have like eight hours to play with on this load meaning like eight hours that you know where we can take showers move around so um i'll see uh what i'm able to do if i'm able to get that workout in but other than that we're loaded strapped down and um i'm just ready waiting on them to approve my departure so we can go ahead and head out Right. 
they got us approved the auto depart was successful I'm um, also didn't get the chance to tell you all that we have uh, we're loaded 8,000 pounds that is a lot for us that's usually uh, sometimes what half pound uh, loads is like 150 maybe 200 500 pounds but uh, when you get in the thousands it's not something that we normally have Just when we thought we'd mastered life on the road, a mysterious stench inside our truck gave us a reality check. Imagine driving along and suddenly your nose wrinkles at a smell that's a cross between mildew and sewage water. Where's it coming from? We were stumped, but here's where it gets interesting. Thanks to Highfield's maintenance team, we discovered a little secret about our truck, the gray tank. Turns out, it doesn't just magically empty itself despite seeing water drip out. That's right. We've been trucking all this time without ever emptying it. Well, y'all, y'all just seen that, so we're about to put the bleach water in here. I'm gonna close it up and um, put the bleach and stuff in here. And then, um, yeah, hopefully that's gonna correct the smell that we have been. <laughs> Nick says she can already tell the difference. I'm trying not to step in the water to track the water smell back in the truck. So, but we'll let y'all know. We'll give y'all an update. I'm sure this is going to alleviate the issue that we, that we have been having. Yep. I can already smell a difference. Baby, see, you don't yep. smell it. Ooh. And we were just wondering what that was. Yeah. I'm like, it's no water in here. Why does it smell like dirty mop water? In the world of truck driving, not everything goes as planned, especially when it comes to finding the right person to unload your cargo. And guess what? Delivering at night, which is a rarity for us, turns the challenge up a notch. Navigating through the darkness, trying to locate our point of contact feels like a scene straight out of a suspense movie. What's up y'all? So we have made That's it to our night. destination out here in Colorado. Very smooth ride. Yeah, this the road right here. No us, uh, no inclement weather. Um, just really like a straight shot from St. Louis. We just rolled 70 west until we made it out here. Uh, we we're just looking for a dock. We got two huge containers um, in the back of our thing. If I haven't already mentioned it, at 8,000 pounds. Like, we were so grateful for all of that weight because it got so windy on the road uh, here. That's why typically when you travel uh, west, especially uh, on like 80 and 70 and all that, like across Nebraska and Wyoming, um, you, you want a lot of weight. All right, so it is currently 1 a.m. And like I said, we currently don't deliver like at night. Um, but for whatever reason, this low, like we typically deliver eight o'clock in the morning six o'clock in the morning you know like following that nine to five type of schedule uh monday through friday and that's why we get like our weekends off but um delivering this yeast for this beer company it is um a little different and now carla she's out circling the area just uh trying to find someone to take these huge things off our truck Right, look like she just walked through that door right there. So uh, hopefully she will be communicating with the person who's gonna unload us. I think we're in Loveland, Colorado. And uh, we're preparing to head to Planet Fitness. 
hoping there they have decent parking and uh, a good gym with hot showers. Let's see. Oh, we're in Bethude, Colorado. Berthoud. <laughs> B-E-R-T-H-O-U-D. Never heard of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check Google Maps to see like what the parking lot looked like. I like to see what it looks like over top. It's having like you. It's a gym. The cool thing about these trucks, you can really park them and get them in and out about anywhere. Sometimes I, this parking lot does look pretty small, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. But you got all this surrounding. This almost look vacant. So we'll be able to figure something out. Oh, look who's gonna join today! <laughs> It's crazy. That's why it's good to have a workout partner. Because, baby, when I tell you Carla wasn't feeling it today. I just, I'm not in the zone yet. And when I get in the zone, I'm going to be locked in. Yep. But, y'all, my Miss Lady on, just, yep. and you uh, already know. And it's like, Carla, uh, I was like, um, you want to work out today? Like, are you feeling a little better to work out today? Because we didn't work out yesterday. And she was like, she wasn't feeling good yesterday, truly. Like, I had never seen her like that. Um... But today, especially I knew she was feeling a little better. I was like, you, you feel like working out today? She was like, mm -mm. I said, oh, well, I'm still going to work out. But I had a feeling that if I drive the truck to the gym, we sitting outside the gym, you ain't going to just sit in here and twiddle your thumbs. Yeah, I think, like you said, it helped to have a partner because even when we did the herbs, I remember when Nick was like, I'm just going to do seven days. And I had told one of my friends, Nick said that. I said, that's what she said, girl. I said, but because I'm going longer, I said, I know she's going to go longer, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we getting ready to work out. I'm glad to see Carla and her workout attire. I don't know what she was doing back there behind the curtain, but it looked like we ready to roll. Ready? We ready. coming in the wrong way. <laughs> it look a little cloudy out. Yeah, it's supposed to be a winter storm coming through. Uh-huh. I thought it was gonna, we was gonna wake up to snow, but I guess not. Ooh, child. Yeah. Please hurry up and get me from off this <laughs> side. Uh, yeah, we do have a load uh, that's gonna be picking up in Utah and taking us to, uh, Tennessee at the roundabout. All right, just as I thought, this parking lot is kind of tight. Woo! Damn. Tight, tight, boy. Let's see how we're going to do this. Oh, you can I get can to this bacon. Over there. Yeah, this little yeah. bacon looking lot. Arriving at 1453 East Isis Turn Boulevard on the right. Interesting. Let's we see. should be able to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, this turn and that turn. Go Let ahead. Come on out. Right, that's what I mean. Go ahead and go. All right. Yep, just as I thought. This is this like bacon, so I was like, we probably can park over here. And then just walk across the street. Yes, uh, a little empty. What this used to be that bank. Lot, uh, tight uh, as hell. They're about to get a, another good look. And then what we'll do? This is something we learned from our mentors. We will take a note and we'll put it on our window. And we'll let them know, like, we're in the gym working out, something like that, at Planet Fitness, and we'll leave our phone number on there. So if there's any issue, hopefully they'll have the DC to just call us and let us know, like, hey, you know, some you can't move here, I mean, park here, something like that. So other than that, that's what we'll do. But it shouldn't be an issue, though, to be honest. The reason it's important to stay on top of the weather is because that guides you in making the right decisions on when to move. 
because I noticed a huge winter storm headed towards Denver. We decided that it would be best to leave one day early for our Utah pickup. All right, y'all, this is Wyoming. And from my understanding, I think it's just getting started. But at least I was able to go ahead and get a good chunk of our uh, miles down. Um, so we can just really just chill here and uh, let this winter storm do what it do. Um, and then tomorrow I may try to get some more driving in just to get close to our destination. I really think the snow is just heading towards Denver. So this may even clear up after a while, maybe. But um, it's about to get dark and uh, we're just going to chill out. How you feeling? Good. We got uh, some new, um, something new that I saw in Walmart where, uh, can you hand it to me? Where'd you put it? Up there. Yeah. Right here? Mm-hmm. We got it all warm and toasty in here. Yeah, so this is something different I found. And what I liked about it was there's no soy in it. See, soy free. Um, and the ingredients are very simple. It's just got the pea protein, pinto bean flakes, chili pepper, cumin, onion powder, just like regular stuff. So I'm like, man, I want to try it. I really hope it tastes good. But this is something I'm going to put over my baked potato. Carla making us some baked potatoes today and some steamed broccoli. But uh, if this is good, I'm going to let y'all know. And I'm going to keep it real too. Like if it's all right, like you ain't really got to have it. Or if it's like, y'all, this is it right here. This is good. I hope it is. I hope it works out. But I love the ingredients, and um, it seems really simple to get together, too. So. Let's see uh, how much, how many more miles we have. Please drive to highlighted route. 332. Tell you driving in the snow, it makes it takes so much longer. I'm gonna put me in the sleeper berth. You want a sleeper? Yeah. Okay. Smells like taco meat. It does. It's not horrible. Um, I can definitely taste the taco seasoning. Is it good? Like, it's doable. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't just be like, oh, y'all, this, y'all know when it's good, I'm gonna give it to y'all. I'll say texture wise, it definitely is very similar to like ground beef texture. Um, I The only thing I wish is that I could just do my own seasoning uh, because, you know, they got their little <clears throat> taco seasoning. But what if I wanted to use this for something that wasn't tacos? Maybe mm -hmm. I have to see if they had something that. But I think, like, if I could do my own seasoning and stuff. But for tacos, this would be straight. Like, if I was putting in the tacos. All right. Good morning, you guys. Let's see what we. Is he going to try to park right here? <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to see if he was stuck. Perfect time to be leaving, baby, because. Ooh. And based off the radar, um, it looks like it's still snowing a little bit, but the longer, like a, around, like later on today, the snow will be done cleared up, and uh, and Salt Lake City is not snowing at all. So, um, I'm really glad. But Denver, it's almost like snow just being dumped. Piles of snow is being dumped on them. So I'm glad I got out of there when I did. Ooh. 
and that's why you have the icer in your windshield wiper fluid so when you use it it'll remove all that too and then we also have to spray the icer too right yeah you have to get your scott on shit is he stuck but how? It's snow over there and ice. What if it's tire spinning? Oh, Look shit. how thick this snow is right here. Yeah, yeah. Right now. Yeah, I know Carla, um, well, you know, I usually drive morning shift, but Carla, she's going to take over so I can take care of some other, handle some other business. Um, it's called teamwork, teamwork, make the dream work. Now we ready for the winter now. <laughs> and I had some warm oatmeal. All this time we've been hanging out in Southern Cali and all that. I know we ain't ain't get like, you. I know y'all ain't think we went ready just in case. <laughs> Okay, we ready. It is ice on in this parking lot, so drive careful. 